The Land God Forgot by Robert Service, read for LibriVox.org by Heather Boyd at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. The lonely sunsets flare forlorn, down valleys dreadly desolate. The lordly mountains soar in scorn, as still as death, as stern as fate. The lonely sunsets flame and die, the giant valleys gulp the night. The monster mountains scrape the sky where eager stars are diamond bright. So gaunt against the gibbous moon, piercing the silence velvet piled, a lone wolf howls his ancient rune, the fell arch spirit of the wild. O oh, outcast land, O oh, leper land! Let the lone wolf cry all express the hate insensate of thy hand, the heart's abysmal loneliness. This recording is in the public domain. The Spell of the Yukon by Robert Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Anita Netherton at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. I wanted the gold, and I sought it. I scrabbled and mucked like a slave. Was it famine or scurvy? I fought it. I hurled my youth into the grave. I wanted the gold, and I got it. Came out with a fortune last fall. Yet somehow life's not what I thought it. Somehow the gold isn't all. No, there's the land. Have you seen it? It's the cussedest land that I know. From the big, dizzy mountains that screen it, to the deep, death-like valleys below. Some say God was tired when he made it. Some say it's a fine land to shun, maybe. But there's some as would trade it for no land on earth. And I'm one. You come to get rich, damn good reason. You feel like an exile at first. You hate it like hell for a season. And then you are worse than the worst. It grips you like some kinds of sinning and twists you from foe to a friend. It seems it's been since the beginning. It seems it will be to the end. I've stood in some mighty-mouthed hollow that's plumb full of husk to the brim. I've watched the big husky suns wallow in crimson and gold and grow dim. Till the moon set the pearly peaks gleaming and the stars tumbled out neck and crop. And I've thought that I surely was dreaming with the peace of the world piled on top. The summer, no sweeter was ever, the sunshiny woods all a-thrill, the grayling a-leap in the river the big horn asleep on the hill. The strong life that never knows harness, the wilds where the caribou call, the freshness, the freedom, the farness. Oh God, how I'm stuck on it all. The winter, the brightness that blinds you, the white land locked tight as a drum, the cold fear that follows and finds you, the silence that bludgeons you dumb. The snows that are older than history, the woods where the weird shadows slant, the stillness, the moonlight, the mystery. I've bade them goodbye, but I can't. There's a land where the mountains are nameless, and the rivers all run God knows where. There are lives that are erring and aimless, and deaths that just hang by a hair. There are hardships that nobody reckons. There are valleys unpeopled and still. There's a land, oh, it beckons and it beckons, and I want to go back, and I will. They're making my money diminish. I'm sick of the taste of champagne. Thank God, when I'm skinned to a finish, I'll pike to the Yukon again. I'll fight, and you bet it's no sham fight. It's hell, but I've been there before, and it's better than this by a damn sight. So it's me for the Yukon once more. There's gold, and it's haunting and haunting. It's luring me on as of old, yet it isn't the gold that I'm wanting, so much as just finding the gold. It's the great big broad land way up yonder. It's the forests where silence has lease. It's the beauty that thrills me with wonder. It's the stillness that fills me with peace. This recording is in the public domain. The Three Voices by Robert Service, read for LibriVox.org by Alison Line at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. The Three Voices. 
The waves have a story to tell me as I lie on the lonely beach, chanting aloft in the pine tops. The wind has a lesson to teach, but the stars sing an anthem of glory I cannot put into speech. The waves tell of ocean spaces, of hearts that are wild and brave, of populous city places, of desolate shores they leave, of men who sally in quest of gold to sink in an ocean grave. The wind is a mighty roamer. He bids me keep me free, clean from the taint of the gold lust, hardy and pure as he. Cling with my love to nature as a child to the mother knee. But the stars throng out in their glory, and they sing of God and man. They sing of the mighty master, of the loom his fingers span. Where a star or a soul is a part of the whole, and weft in the wondrous plan. Here by the campfire's flicker, deep in my blanket curled, I long for the peace of the pine gloom, where the scroll of the Lord is unfurled, and the wind and the wave are silent, and the world is singing to world. This recording is in the public domain. The Call of the Wild by Robert Service, read for the LibriVox.org by Sarah Wiberly at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. Have you gazed on naked grandeur when there's nothing else to gaze on, set pieces and drop curtain scenes galore? Big mountains heave to heaven which the blinding sunsets blazon, black canyons where the rapids rip and roar. Have you swept the visioned valley with the green streams streaking through it, searched the vastness for a something you have lost? Have you strung your soul to silence? Then for God's sake, go and do it. Hear the challenge, learn the lesson, pay the cost. Have you wandered in the wilderness, the sagebrush desolation, the bunch grass levels where the cattle graze? Have you whistled bits of ragtime at the end of all creation and learned to know the desert's little ways? Have you camped upon the foothills? Have you galloped o'er the ranges? Have you roamed the arid sunlands through and through? Have you chummed up with the Mesa? Do you know its moods and changes? Then listen to the wild, it's calling you. Have you known the great white silence, not a snow gem twig a quiver, eternal truths that shame our soothing lies? Have you broken trail on snowshoes, mushed your huskies up the river, dared the unknown, led the way, and clutched the prize? Have you marked the map's void spaces, mingled with the mongrel races, felt the savage strength of brute in every thew? And though grim as hell the worst is, can you round it off with curses, then hearken to the wild, it's wanting you. Have you suffered, starved, and triumphed, groveled down, yet grasped at glory, grown bigger in the bigness of the whole? Done things, just for the doin', letting babblers tell the story, seeing through the nice veneer the naked soul. Have you seen God in his splendors, heard the text that nature renders, you'll never hear it in the family pew? The simple things, the true things, the silent men who do things, then listen to the wild, it's calling you. They have cradled you in custom, they have primed you with their preaching, they have soaked you in convention through and through. They have put you in a showcase, you're a credit to their teaching, but can't you hear the wild, it's calling you. Let us probe the silent places, let us seek what luck betide us, let us journey to a lonely land I know. There's a whisper on the night wind, there's a star, a gleam to guide us, and the wild is calling, calling, let us go. This recording is in the public domain. Uh, the Pines by Robert Service. Read for LibriVox.org by David Beckett Padbury at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. We sleep in the sleep of ages, the bleak barbarian pines. The gray moss drapes us like sages, and the closer we lock our lines. And deeper we clutch through the gelid gloom, where never a sunbeam shines. On the flank of the storm-gored ridges are our blank battalions massed. We surge in a host of the sullen coast, and we sing in the ocean blast. From empire of sea to empire of snow, we grip our empire fast. To the niggard lands we are driven, twixt desert and foe we are penned. To us was the northern north land given, ours to stronghold and defend. Ours till the world be riven in the crash of the other end. Ours from the bleak beginning through aeons of death like sleep. Ours from the shock when we na the naked rock was hurled from the hissing deep. Ours through twilight ages of weary glacier creep, wind of the east, wind of the west, wandering to and fro, 
chant your songs in our topmost boughs that the sons of man may know. The peerless pine was the first to come, and the pine will be last to go. We pillar the halls of perfumed gloom. We plume where the eagles soar. The north wind swoops from the brooding pole, and our ancients crash and roar. But where one falls from the crumbling walls shoots up a hearty score. We spring from the gloom of the canyon's womb. In the valley's lab we lie. From the white foam fringe where the breakers cringe to the peaks that tusk the sky. We climb and we peer in the crag-locked mirror that gleams like a golden eye. Gain to the verge of the hogback ridge where the vision range is free. Pines and pines in the shadow of pines as far as the eye can see. A steadfast region of stalwart knights in a dominant empery. Sun, moon, and stars give answers. Shall we not staunchly stand? Even now, as forever wards the wilder strand, sentinels of stillness, lord of the last lone land. This recording is in the public domain. Grin by Robert Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Chris McLean at the Ottawa Folk Festival. August 2010. Grin. If you're up against a bruiser and you're getting knocked about, grin. If you're feeling pretty groggy and you're licked beyond a doubt, grin. Don't let him see you're funking. Let him know with every clout, though your face is battered to a pulp, your blooming heart is stout. Just stand upon your pins until the beggar knocks you out and grin. This life's a bally battle. And the same advice holds true of grin. If you're up against it badly, then it's only one on you, so grin. If the future's black as thunder, don't let people see you're blue. Just cultivate a cast iron smile of joy the whole day through. If they call you little sunshine, wish that they'd know troubles too. You may grin. Rise up in the morning with the will that's smooth or rough, you'll grin. Sink to sleep at midnight, and although you're feeling tough, yet grin. There's nothing gained by whining, and you're not that kind of stuff. You're a fighter from a way back, and you won't take a rebuff. Your trouble is that you don't know when you have had enough. Don't give in. If fate should down you, just get up and take another cuff. You may bank on it that there is no philosophy like bluff and grin. This recording is in the public domain. Did it work? It worked. The guy, uh, a podcaster from Midland, came down there. Sean McGahey, could you do a sake of the song for the sake of the song? He may actually grab it this weekend because he does that. Ready to go? The Shooting of Dan McGrew by Robert Service, read for LibriVox.org by Gordon Fury at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. A bunch of the boys were whooping it up at the Malamute Saloon. The kid that handles the music box was hitting a jag time tune. Back of the bar in a solo game sat dangerous Dan McGrew. And watching his luck was his love alight, the lady that's known as Lou. When out of the night, which was 50 below, and into the din and the glare, there stumbled a miner fresh in from the creeks, dog dirty and loaded for bear. He looked like a man with a foot in the grave and scarcely the strength of a louse. Yet he tilted a poke of dust on the bar and he called for drinks for the house. There was none could place the stranger's face, though we searched ourselves for a clue but we drank his health, and the last to drink was dangerous Dan McGrew. There's men that somehow just grip your eyes and hold them hard like a spell. And such was he, and he looked to me like a man who had lived in hell. With a face most hair, and a dreary stare of a dog whose day is done. And he watered the green stuff in his glass, and the drops fell one by one. Then I got to figuring who he was, and wondering what he'd do. Then I turned my head, and there watching him was the lady that's known as Lou. 
His eyes went rubbering round the room, and he seemed in a kind of daze, till at last that old piano fell in the way of his wandering gaze. Ragtime Kid was having a drink, and there was no one else on the stool. So the stranger stumbles across the room and flops down there like a fool. In a buckskin shirt that was glazed in dirt, he sat and I saw him sway. Then he clutched the keys with his talon hands. My God, but that man could play. Were you ever out in the grate alone when the moon was awful clear? And the icy mountains hemmed you in with a silence you most could hear? With only the howl of a timber wolf and you camped there in the cold. A half-dead thing in a stark dead world, clean mad for the muck called gold. While high overhead, green, yellow, and red, north light swept in bars. Then you've a hunch what the music meant, hunger, night, and the stars. A hunger, not of the belly kind, that's banished with bacon and beans. But the gnawing hunger of a lonely men for a home for and all it means. For a fireside far from the cares that are four walls and a roof above, but oh, so crammed full of cozy joy and crowned with a woman's love. A woman dearer than all the world and true as heaven is true. God, how ghastly she looks through her rouge, the lady that's known as Lou. Then on a sudden, the music changed so soft that you could scarce hear, but you felt that life had been looted clean of all that it once held dear. That someone had stolen the woman you loved, that her love was a devil's lie, that your guts were gone and the best for you was to crawl away and die. Twas the crowning cry of a heart's despair and it thrilled you through and through. I guess I'll make it a spread misere, said dangerous Dan McGrew. The music almost died away, then it burst like a pent up flood and it seemed to say, repay, repay, and my eyes were blind with blood. The thought came back of an ancient wrong, and it stung like a frozen lash, and the lust awoke to kill, to kill, then the music stopped with a crash. And the stranger turned, and his eyes they burned in a most peculiar way. In a buckskin shirt that was glazed with dirt, he sat, and I saw him sway. Then his lips went in a kind of grin, and he spoke, and his voice was calm, and boys, he says, you don't know me, and none of you care a damn. But I want you to state, and my words are straight. But I want to state, and my words are straight, and I'll bet my poke they're true, that one of you is a hound of hell, and that one is Dan McGrew. Then I ducked my head, and the lights went out, and two guns blazed in the dark. And a woman screamed, and the lights went up, and two men lay stiff and stark. Pitched on his head and pumped full of lead was dangerous Dan McGrew, while a man from the creeks lay clutched to the breast of the lady that's known as Lou. These are the sample facts of the case, and I guess I ought to know. They say that stranger was crazed with hooch, and I'm not denying it so. I'm not so wise as the lawyer guys, but strictly between us two, the woman that kissed him and pinched his poke was the lady that's known as Lou. This is a recording in the public domain. The Cremation of Sam McGee by Robert Service, read for LibriVox.org by Jane Stalabras at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake Labarge, I cremated Sam McGee. Now Sam McGee was from Tennessee where the cotton blooms and blows. Why he left his home in the south to roam round the pole, God only knows. He was always cold, but the land of gold seemed to hold him like a spell. Though he'd often say in his homely way that he'd sooner live in hell. On a Christmas day, we were mushing our way over the Dawson Trail. Talk of your cold through the parka's fold, it stabbed like a driven nail. 
If our eyes we'd closed and the lashes froze till sometimes we couldn't see. It wasn't much fun, but the only one to whimper was Sam McGee. And that very night as we lay packed tight in our robes beneath the snow, and the dogs were fed and the stars overhead were dancing heel and toe, he turned to me and cap, says he, I'll cash in this trip, I guess. And if I do, I'm asking you, you won't refuse my last request. Well, he seemed so low that I couldn't say no. And then he says with a sort of moan, it's the cursed cold, it's got right hold till I'm chilled clean through to the bone. Yet taint being dead, it's my awful dread of the icy grave that pains. So I want you to swear, foul or fair, you'll cremate my last remains. A pal's last need is a thing to heed, so I swore I would not fail. And we started on on a streak of dawn, but God, he looked ghastly pale. He crouched on the sleigh and he raved all day of his home in Tennessee. And before nightfall, a corpse was all that was left of Sam McGee. There wasn't a breath in that land of death, and I hurry, horror-driven, with a corpse half hid that I couldn't get rid because of a promise given. I was lashed to the sleigh, and it seemed to say, you may tax your brawn and brain, be a promise true, and it's up to you to cremate those last remains. Now a promise paid is a debt unpaid, and the trail has its own stern code. In the days to come, though my lips were dumb in my heart, how I cursed that load. In the long, long night, by the lone firelight, why the huskies, round in a ring, held out their woes to the homeless snows. Oh, God, how I loathed that thing. And every day, that quiet clay seemed to heavy and heavier grow. And on I went, though the dogs were spent and the grub was getting low. The trail was bad, and I felt half mad, but I swore I would not give in. And I'd often sing to the hateful thing, and it hearkened with a grin. Till I came to the marge of Lake Labarge, and a derelict lying there. It was jammed in the ice, and I saw in a trice it was called the Alice May. I looked it in, and I thought a bit, and I looked at my frozen chum. Then here, said I, with a sudden cry, is my crematorium. Some planks I tore from the cabin floor, and I lit the boiler fire. Some coal I found that was lying around, and I heaped the fuel fire higher. The flames just soared, and the furnace roared such a blaze you seldom see. And I burrowed a hole in the glowing coal, and I stuffed in Sam McGee. Then I made a hike, for I didn't like to hear him sizzle so. When the heavens scorned, and the huskies howled, and the wind began to blow. It was icy cold, but the hot sweat rolled down my cheek, and I don't know why. And the greasy smoke and an inky cloak went streaking down the sky. I do not know how long in the snow I wrestled with grisly fear, but the stars came out and they danced about ere again I ventured near. I was sick with dread, but I bravely said, I'll just take a peek inside. I guess he's cooked and it's time I looked and then the door I opened wide. And there sat Sam looking cool and calm in the heart of the furnace roar. And he wore a smile, you could see a mile, and he said, please close that door. It's fine in here, but I greatly fear you'll let in the cold and storm. Since I left Plumtree down in Tennessee, it's the first time I've been warm. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake Labarge when I cremated Sam McGee. This recording is in the public domain. My Madonna by Robert Service, read for LibriVox.org by Dana Johnston Fisher at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. I hailed me a woman from the street, shameless but oh so fair. 
I bade her sit in the model's seat and I painted her sitting there. I hid all trace of her heart unclean. I painted a babe at her breast. I painted her as she might have been if the worst had been the best. She laughed at my picture and went away. Then came, with a knowing nod, a connoisseur, and I heard him say, "'Tis Mary, the mother of God." So I painted a halo round her hair, and I sold her and took my fee. And she hangs in the church of St. Hilaire, where you and all may see. This re recording is in the public domain. Unforgotten by Robert Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Aaron Scrappick at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. I know a garden where the lilies gleam, and one who lingers in the sunshine there. She is than white stoled lily far more fair, and oh, her eyes are heaven lit with dream. I know a garret cold and dark and drear, and one who toils and toils with tireless pen, until his brave, sad eyes grow weary, then he seeks the stars, pale, silent as a seer. And ah, it's strange for desolate and dim. Between those two there rolls an ocean wide, yet he is in the garden by her side, and she is in the garret there with him. This recording is in the public domain. The Reckoning by Robert Service, read by LibraVox.org by Colin Frank at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. It's fine to have a blowout in a fancy restaurant, with terrapin and canvas back and all the wine you want, to enjoy the flower and music, watch the pretty woman pass, smoke a choice cigar, and sip the wealthy water in your glass. It's bully in a high-toned joint to eat and drink your fill, but it's quite another matter when you pay the bill. It's great to go out every night on fun or pleasure or bent, to wear your glad rags always, and to never save a cent, to drift along regardless, have a good time every trip, to hit the high spot sometimes, and to let your chances slip. To know you're acting foolish, yet to go on fooling still, till nature calls a showdown, and you pay the bill. Time has got a little bill, get wise while you, yet you may, for the debit side's increasing in a most alarming way. The thing you had no right to do, the things you should have done, they're all put down. It's up to you to pay for every one. So eat, drink, and be merry. Have a good time if you will. But God help you when the time comes, and you foot the bill. This recording is in the public domain. Quatrains by Robert Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Stephen Michael O'Grady at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. One said, thy life is thine to make or mar, to flicker feebly or to soar a star. It lies with thee, the choice is thine, is thine, to hit the ties or drive thy auto car. I answer her, the choice is mine, ah, no, we all were made or marred long, long ago. The parts are written, hear the super wail, who is stage managing this cosmic show? Blind fools of fate and slaves of circumstance, life is a fiddler and we all must dance. From gloom where mocks that will-o'-wisp free will, I heard a voice cry, say, give us a chance. Chance? Oh, there is no chance. The scene is set. Up with the curtain. Man, the marionette. Resumes his part. The gods will work the wires. They've got it all down fine. You bet. You bet. It's all decreed. The mighty earthquake crash. The countless constellations wheel and flash. The rise and fall of empires. War's red tide. The composition of your dinner's hash. There's no haphazard in this world of ours. Cause and effects are grim, relentless powers. They rule the world. A king was shot last night. Last night I held the Joker and both bowers. From out the mesh of fate our heads we thrust. We can't do what we would, but we must. Heredity has got us in a cinch. Consoling thought when you've been on a bust. Hark to the song where spheral voices blend. There's no beginning. Never will be end. It makes us nutty. Hang the astral chimes. The tables spread. Come let us dine, my friend. This recording is in the public domain. The Men That Don't Fit In by Robert Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Jennifer Ellis 
at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. There's a race of men that don't fit in, a race that can't stay still. So they break the hearts of kith and kin, and they roam the world at will. <laughs> they range the field and they rove the flood, and they f climb the mountain's crest. Theirs is the curse of the gypsy blood, and they don't know how to rest. If they just went straight, they might go far. They are strong and brave and true, but they're always tired of the things that are, and they want the strange and new. They say, could I find my proper groove? What a deep mark I would make. So they chop and change, and each fresh move is only a fresh mistake. And each forgets as he strips and runs with a brilliant, fitful pace. It's the steady, quiet, plodding ones who win the lifelong race. And each forgets that his youth has fled, forgets that his prime is past, till he stands one day with a hope that's dead in the glare of the truth at last. He has failed, he has failed, he has missed his chance. He has just done things by half. Life's been a jolly good joke on him, and now is the time to laugh. Ha ha, he is one of the legion lost. He was never meant to win. He is a rolling stone and it's bred in the bone. He's a man who won't fit in. This recording is in the public domain. Music in the Bush by Robert Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Jill's Mudd at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. O'er the dark pines she sees the silver moon, and in the west, all tremulous, a star. And soothing sweet she hears the mellow tune of cowbells jangled in the fields afar. Quite listless, for her daily stent is done, she stands, sad exile, at her rose-wreathed door, and sends her love eternal with the sun that goes to gild the land she'll see no more. The grave gaunt pines imprison her sad gaze, all still the sky, and darkling drearily. She feels the chilly breath of dear dead days come sifting through the alders eerily. Oh, how the roses riot in their bloom, the curtains stir as with an ancient pain. Her old piano gleams from out the gloom and waits and waits her tender touch in vain. But now her hands like moonlight brush the keys with velvet grace, melodious delight. And now a sad refrain from overseas goes sobbing on the bosom of the night. And now she sings. O oh, singer in the gloom, voicing a sorrow we can ne'er express, here in Farness, where we few have room, unshamed to show our love and tenderness. Our hearts will echo till they beat no more, that song of sadness and of motherland, and stretched in deathless love to England's shore. Some day she'll hearken and she'll understand. A prima donna in the shining past, but now a mother growing old and gray, she thinks of how she held a people fast in thrall and gleaned the triumphs of a day. She sees a sea of faces like a dream. She sees herself a queen of song once more. She sees lips part in rapture, eyes agleam. She sings as never once she sang before. She sings a wild sweet song that throbs with pain, the added pain of life that transcends art. A song of home, a deep celestial strain, the glorious swan song of a dying heart. A lame tramp comes along the railway track, a grizzled dog whose day is nearly done. He passes, pauses, then comes slowly back and listens there, an audience of one. She sings, her golden voice is passion fraught as when she charmed a thousand eager ears. He listens trembling and she knows it not and down his hollow cheeks roll bitter tears. She ceases and is still as if to pray. There is no sound, the stars are all alight, only a wretch who stumbles on his way, only a vagrant sobbing in the night. This recording is in the public domain. The Low Down White by Robert Service, read for LibBox.org by Brian Major at Ottawa Folk Fest, August 2010. This is the payday at the mines. When beard broods come down, there's money to burn in the street tonight. So I sent my notch to town. 
with a haggard face and a ribbon of red entwined in her hair of brown. And I know at the dawn she came reeling home with the bottles one, two, three for herself to join her shame and two big bottles for me to make me forget the thing I am, the man I used to be, to make me forget the brand of the dog. As I kept in the hilarious place to make me forget, once I kindled the light of love in a lady's face, where even the squalid squash now holds me a black dispates. Oh, I have guarded my secret well, a new king as I speak in a troubled tongue like a rogue unhung mid the ranch house filth and reek. I could roll to bed with the Latin phrase and raise within a verse of Greek. Yet yeah, I was a senior prize man once and the prize of a colleague a Call me to the bar, my friends were true, but they could not keep me straight. Then came the divorce, and I abroad and died on the river plate. But I am not dead yet, although with a half how long there isn't time to spare. And I hope that the year will see me out. And thank God no one will care. Save maybe the little slim squalish girl with the rose of a shame in her hair. She will come with the dawn, and the dawn is near. I can see its evil glow like a corpse light, even though a frosty pain in a night of want and woe. In wonder, she comes by the Leak ball points with staggering through the snow. Uh, oh. This recording is a public domain. The Woman and the Angel by Robert Service, read for LibriVox.org by Christopher Wiberly at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. An angel was tired of heaven as he lounged in the golden street. His halo was tilted sideways and his harp lay mute at his feet. So the master stooped in his pity and gave him a pass to go for the space of a moon to the earth world to mix with the men below. He doffed his celestial garments, scarce waiting to lay them straight. He bade goodbye to Peter, who stood by the golden gate. The sexless singers of heaven chanted a fond farewell, and the imps looked up as they pattered on the red-hot flags of hell. Never was seen such an angel, eyes of a heavenly blue, features that shamed Apollo, hair of a golden hue. The women simply adored him, his lips were like Cupid's bow, but he never ventured to use them, and so they voted him slow. Till at last there came one woman, a marvel of loveliness, and she whispered to him, Do you love me? And he answered that woman, Yes. 
And she said, put your arms around me and kiss me and hold me so. But fiercely he drew back, saying, this thing is wrong and I know. Then sweetly she mocked his scruples and softly she him beguiled. You who are verily man among men, speak with the tongue of a child. We have outlived the old standards. We have burst like an over-tightening thong the ancient, outworn, puritanic traditions of right and wrong. Then the master feared for his angel and called him again to his side, for oh, the woman was wondrous, and oh, the angel was tired. And deep in his hell sang the devil, and this was the strain of his song, the ancient, outworn, puritanic traditions of right and wrong. This recording is in the public domain. New Year's Eve by Robert Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Sean McGahey for the Ottawa Folk Festival Collection. It's cruel cold on the waterfront, silent and dark and drear. Only the black tide weltering, only the hissing snow. And I alone, like a storm-tossed wreck on this night of the glad new year, shuffling along in the icy wind, ghastly and gaunt and slow. They're playing a tune in McGuffey's saloon, and it's cheery and bright in there. God, but I'm weak, since the bitter dawn and never a bite of food. I'll just go over and slip inside. I mustn't give way to despair. Perhaps I can bum a little booze if the boys are feeling good. They'll jeer at me, and they'll sneer at me, and they'll call me a whiskey soak. Have a drink? Well, thank ye kindly, sir. I don't mind if I do. A driveling, dirty, gin-joint fiend, the butt of the barroom joke. Sunk and sodden and hopeless. Another? Well, here's to you. McGuffey is showing a bunch of the boys how Bob Fitzsimmons hit. The barman is talking of Tammany Hall and why the ward boss got fired. I'll just sneak into a corner and they'll let me alone a bit. The room is reeling round and round. Oh God, but I'm tired. I'm tired. Roses she wore on her breast that night. Oh, but their scent was sweet. Alone we sat on the balcony and the fan palms arched above. The witching strain of a waltz by Strauss came up to our cool retreat. And I prisoned her little hand in mine, and I whispered my plea of love. Then, sudden the laughter died on her lips, and lowly she bent her head. And, oh, there came in the deep dark eyes a look that was heaven to see. And the moments went, and I waited there, and never a word was said. And she plucked from her bosom a rose of red and shyly gave it to me. Then the music swelled to a crash of joy and the lights blazed up like day. And I held her fast to my throbbing heart and I kissed her bonny brow. She is mine, she is mine forevermore, the violins seemed to say. And the bells were ringing the new year in. Oh God, I can hear them now. Don't you remember that long last waltz? with its sobbing sad refrain? Don't you remember that last goodbye and the dear eyes dim with tears? Don't you remember that golden dream with never a hint of pain, of lives that would blend like an angel song in the bliss of the coming years? Oh, what have I lost? What have I lost? Ethel, forgive forgive the red red rose is faded now and it's fifty years ago twere better to die a thousand deaths than to live each day as i live i have sinned i have sunk to the lowest depths but oh i have suffered so hark oh hark i can hear the bells look i can see her there fair is a dream but it fades, and now I can hear the dreadful hum of the crowded court. See, the judge looks down. Not guilty, my lord, I swear. The bells, I can hear the bells again. Ethel, I come, I come. Rouse up, old man, it's twelve o'clock. You can't sleep here, you know. 
Say, ain't you got no sentiment? Lift up your muddled head. Have a drink to the glad new year, a drop before you go. You darned old dirty hobo. My God! Here, boys! He's dead! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Comfort by Robert Service. Read for LiverVox.org by Kim Perry at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. Say, you struck a heap of trouble. Bust in business. Lost your wife. No one cares a cent about you. You don't care a cent for life. Hard luck has a hope bereft you. Health is failing. Wish you'd die. Why, you still the sunshine left you and the big blue sky. The sky so blue it makes you wonder if it's heaven shining through. Earth so smiling way out y yonder. Sun so bright it dazzles you. Birds are singing, flowers are flinging, and all their fragrance on the breeze. Dancing shadows, green, still meadows. Don't you mope, you've still got these. These, and none can take them away from you. These, and none can weigh their worth. What, you're tired and you're broken beaten? Why, you're rich, and you've got the earth. Yes, if you're a tramp in the tatters while the blue sky bends above, you've got nearly all that matters. You've got God, and God is love. This recording is in the public domain. The Harpy by Robert Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Chris Baring at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. There was a woman, and she was wise. Woefully wise was she. She was old, so old, yet her years all told were but a score and three. And she knew by heart, from finish to start, the book of iniquity. There is no hope for such as I, on earth nor yet in heaven. Unloved I lived, unloved I die, unpitied, unforgiven. A loathed jade I plied my trade, unhallowed and unshriven. I paint my cheeks, for they are white, and cheeks of chalk men hate. Mine eyes with wine I make to shine, that men may seek and sate. With overhead a lamp of red, I sit me down and wait. Until they come, the nightly scum, with drunken eyes aflame. Your sweethearts, sons, ye scornful ones, tis I who know their shame. The gods ye see are brutes to me, and so I play my game. For life is not the thing we thought, and not the thing we plan. And woman in a bitter world must do the best she can, must yield the stroke and bear the yoke and serve the will of man, must serve his need and ever feed the flame of his desire, though she be loved for love alone or be she loved for hire, for every man since life began is tainted with the mire. And though you know he love you so and set you on love's throne, yet let your eyes but mock his sighs and let your heart be stone, lest you be left as I was left, attainted and alone. From love's close kiss to hell's abyss is one sheer flight I trow, and wedding ring and bridal bell are will-o'-wisps of woe. And tis not wise to love too well, and this all women know. Wherefore the wolf pack have engorged upon the lamb their prey. With siren smile and serpent guile I make the wolf pack pay. With velvet paws and flensing claws a tigress roused to slay. One who in youth sought truest truth, and found a devil's lies, a symbol of the sin of man, a human sacrifice. Yet shall I blame on man the shame, could it be otherwise? Was I not born to walk in scorn where others walk in pride? The maker marred and evil starred I drift upon his tide, and he alone shall judge his own, and so I his judgment bide. Fate has written a tragedy, its name is the human heart. The theater is the house of life, woman the mummer's part. The devil enters the prompter's box, and the play is ready to start. This recording is in the public domain. The Tramps by Robert Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Chris Page at the Ottawa Folk Festival in August 2010. The Tramps. Can you recall, dear comrade, when we tramped God's land together and we sang the old, old earth song for our youth was very sweet? When we drank and fought and lusted as we mocked at tie and tether along the road to anywhere the wide world at our feet. Along the road to anywhere, when each day had its story, when time was yet our vassal, and life's jest was still unstale, when peace unfathomed filled our hearts as, bathed in amber glory, along the road to anywhere, we watched the sunsets pale. Alas, the road to anywhere is pitfalled with disaster. There's hunger, want, and weariness, Yet, oh, we loved it so, as on we tramped exultantly 
and no man was our master, and no man guessed what dreams were ours, as singing heel and toe. We tramped the road to anywhere, the magic road to anywhere, the tragic road to anywhere, such dear, dim years ago. This recording is in the public domain. L'Envoi by Robert Service, read for LibriVox.org by Lise Rochefort at the Ottawa Folk Festival, August 2010. You who have lived in the land, you who have trusted the trail, you who are strong to withstand, you who are swift to assail, songs have I sung to beguile, vintage of desperate years, hard as a harlot's smile, bitter as unshed tears. Little of joy or mirth, little of ease I sing, sagas of men of earth, humanly suffering, such as you all have done, savagely faring forth, sons of the midnight sun, Argonauts of the North. Far in the land God forgot glimmers the lure of your trail, still in your lust are you taught even to win is to fail. Still must you follow and fight under the vampire wing, there in the long, long night, hoping and vanquishing. Husbandman of the wild, reaping a barren gain, scourged by desire, reconciled unto disaster and pain. These my songs are for you, you who are seared with the brand, God knows I have tried to be true. Please, God, you will understand. This recording is in the public domain. <laughs>